And we're talking about coming soon. We're talking about events, things yet to come. And uh, tonight, what God has touched my heart with is something that, again, we're being told will be uh, a reality in the next 10 or 20 years. And that is a shortage of food and a worldwide famine that is predicted to come in the next 10 to 20 years. Uh, now, I will say this. I know I quote and have read a lot of uh, studies and uh, things to you throughout these messages. Now, I can't say that, uh, you know, there's not other opinions to some of these things. There are people who believe that. I think the majority of science is telling us this. There are others who believe it differently. I'm not trying to get you to believe a science report. I want you to believe the Bible. I'm just telling you what they're saying and how it lines up with what's coming according to the Word of God. But let's look at Revelation chapter 6, and I want to read the first eight verses. Uh, this is dealing with these four horsemen. And it speaks to this very thing and gives us a glimpse of things yet to come in the future. If you got it, say amen. amen. The Bible says, and John said, I saw, uh, and I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given unto him that sat thereon to make peace from the earth, to take peace from the earth, and they that, sh uh, that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and, a, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked and beheld a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto him, or unto them rather, over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. Father, we stand in your presence tonight, and we thank you that you've allowed us to come and once again look at things which are yet to come. And Lord, we know as we uh, look at our earth and as a new year has come, we have been told that there will be a lot of new things coming in the future. And Lord, this is one that we hear about and we see in your word that it is a reality. So Father, we pray tonight that you'll help us to see what is to come and be prepared for the days ahead. And Father, we believe that you are on your way to coming soon to take your church. But Father, we pray tonight that you'll speak to our hearts, give us a realization of the time and how short that it is. And God, if there's one here that is not saved, draw them to Christ through your spirit, and we'll pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And you be seated. Thank you for standing with me. Um, in some of my research, I found that they're saying in 10 years, the earth will surpass 8 billion people in population. We're a little over seven right now, nearing seven and a half, I guess. They're saying in 10 years we'll surpass eight billion. And uh, when we pass that, that certain things are going to start to change with our climate. And then they say in 20 years we are going to surpass uh, nine billion people on the earth. And with that comes more development, more uh, uh, trees and forest land has to be changed over. And with that will come climate change. And with that will come uh, drying up of certain bodies of water. There's a, a lake in Africa 
and I can't figure out how to, how to say this, so I'm going to give it the Polk County version. Is that all right? Po Polkanese, Ruth, Ruth and Tommy calls it. Uh, Lake Tangayaka, Takayaki, that, that's what I think of, that restaurant in Cleveland. But that's not what it is. But this is a, a major lake in Africa. It's a major fishing lake, and it's used, and it supplies lots of countries within Africa with sustenance and food and different things for their economy and the food that they eat. It's estimated when this population spikes in the next 10 to 20 years that that lake is going to lose 30% of its production because of all the different factors going on. Well, what they're saying is when that happens, it's going to be happening other places, and the world will not be able to sustain with food the amount of people that is living on it, thus plunging us into a famine. And there's some that say this could start to happen in the next four to five years that we'll see crop shortages, that we'll see shortages in uh, places where we've never seen them before. We already know in some third world countries they struggle with hunger already. But they're saying this is going to be a problem that gets worse and worse as we go forward. And like everything else we've talked about in this series of messages, they all tie in to the Word of God. And I've taken you tonight to Revelation chapter 6 to talk about things that are going to happen after the church is taken uh, from uh, the earth. And the tribulation begins to happen. And because it speaks to this very thing. Two of these horses in particular deal with it specifically. So this is something that's going to happen. Is it going to happen in our lifetime? It's a very good possibility. Will it happen in the next 10 to 20 years? The famine may or may not happen, but I'm more worried about whether or not Jesus is coming in the next 10 to 20 years. And that's what we should be prepared on and have our hearts set to. So let's just take a look at these horses. I want to look at all four of them and just talk about um, uh, their order and what they mean. Now, if you attended the Bible study, you've heard us talk about these. And I don't want to get bogged down tonight in uh, all the intricacies of every one of these, but just to talk about them and what they are. Verse 2 talks about a white horse. Take a look at that. And verse 2 says, And I saw and beheld, or behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now we know from a study of the Word of God that this speaks of the Antichrist, the, the one who is to come to pretend to be Jesus. Because you remember later on in the Revelation it speaks of Jesus coming, and he is also on a white horse. But we know this is not Jesus, so this is Satan's imitation. We talked about that a few messages ago. This white horse is the Antichrist. Now, this is the first thing we understand or we believe to happen after the church is taken out. Okay, well then after that, uh, you see in verse 4, the second horse, which is the red horse. Verse 4 says, And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and uh, that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. Now this red horse speaks of war. When Antichrist comes, of course we know he's going to try to make peace, but then that peace will be short-lived, and then wars will break out all over the earth. Now how is this uh, uh, applicable to today? Well, we're living in a time where war seems to be on the doorstep at every turn. And uh, we can't necessarily blame one person or the other. The earth is full of sin. I believe the earth is groaning in labor pains. I believe the earth itself and the people of earth and the actions of the people on earth are telling us Jesus is coming soon. And this Antichrist is going to make war. And we are on the brink of war, it seems, just about all the time. I know there's lots of tensions with the Middle East. We've had tensions with North Korea. We've been at war with uh, Vietnam and Korea and the Gulf and, and, and uh, over in the Middle East and other times. And we've been at war with our own selves. We've been at war with Mexico. We've, we've had wars upon wars upon wars. And the discussion about these wars isn't going to slow down anytime because it's telling us of things yet to come. I want you to see how close we are to this predictions by science becoming reality. Now, look in the, the fifth verse. I want you to see the third horse. It says, And when he had opened the, the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. Now, this black horse is the horse of famine. Now, this is what we're talking about tonight, that science tells us in 10 to 20 years we are going to see a global famine. And that just might actually be true. It 
could be shorter than that. It could be longer. But it's not going to be necessarily because the world is so overpopulated. We believe this is going to happen because the Antichrist is going to make war. And when war happens, uh, things change. Agricult agriculture changes. Farmers are called into the military to work. And, and uh, you can study war, and I don't want to get into all that, but you can study wars in America, how plants that were making vehicles or other metal type equipment would change and make war equipment for a while. Things like that happen. Well, as a result of all this war and all of this death, comes the black horse of famine. Now notice what it says. It says he had a pair of balances in his hand. And verse 6 says, I heard the voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil, or uh, and uh, rather the wine. Now what's going to happen is it's going to cost a day's wage thereabouts to buy bread. Not the things that go in the bread, not a McDonald's meal. Just to buy bread. This famine is going to be so widespread that millions upon millions upon millions of people are going to die. This is a reality of the tribulation. This famine that science says is coming actually is coming. There's a lot of things that science says are coming that they may or may not be right. I was reading in some of this research about how in a few years they think we're going to be able to bend space and time. And the idea of time travel won't be just an idea anymore uh, through quantum physics and all this other stuff. And when you hear that stuff, you just kind of shake your head. It's like, yeah, you can imagine who said that. Some guy that you look at him and think his, his elevator don't go all the way to the top anyway. <laughs> but things like this, when they say that, it rings true in the Scripture. And when I heard and I read about that, I thought, you know what? That is true. This thing is real. It's something that is coming. And if science tells us it's going to happen, we should be able to see in the Word of God that it's true. Not because science has told us, but because the Word of God says that it's true. And friend, I believe this thing is closer than we thought that it was. We believe Jesus is coming soon, and I believe this is too. Can you imagine a time when it's going to be so hard to eat that, that you're going to have to work an entire day to get a sandwich or a loaf of bread. We don't know what things like that are like. But yet science tells us those days are coming. And friend, I'll tell you, the Word of God says it is too. Now read on. It says, when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. Now here's our fourth horse, all right? And I looked and beheld, uh, behold a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death. And hell followed with him. Now, what's the order? Well, you've got the Antichrist comes on the white horse to make war. You've got the red horse that's symbolic of the wars that he will generate on this earth. You've got the black horse, symbolic of the famine that will result. And then what follows famine? Death follows famine. Notice what it says. Death and hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over a fourth part of the earth to kill with a sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast's of the earth. Now these are seals. These are the part of the seven seals that are discussed. These are simply four of the seven seals. We're not talking about the bowls. We're not talking about the trumpets. We're not talking about the vials. We're simply talking about these first four seals. This is reality. This is something that is coming to this earth. This is something when science says days like this are coming we can look at and know that it's true because it is coming. A, third, a fourth part of the earth, a quarter of the population of the earth is going to die through the wars that the Antichrist creates, through the death, for the famine of the lack of food, through disease, through mutilation of beasts and animals. There is a day coming to this earth, dear friend, that the Bible says is a terrible, terrible time. So what then are we to do? <laughs> what can we do about this? Nothing. Flip back a few pages. Go to Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. What can we do to stop this? Nothing. Revelation 1.1. 1, 1, the first verse, the first chapter of the Revelation to John on the Isle of Patmos says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. See that? These things that John saw, and this is including in that, must come 
to pass. These are not uh, options. These are not things that we can change. Now, a lot of the things that we've talked about, we can change, right? We can change uh, the, the morality going in the toilet with the church standing. If we can change the direction our children head, the decisions our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren make, we can do a, a something about some of these things. But this is one thing that we can't do anything about because it's coming. John to, was told by Jesus, these things must shortly come to pass. That word shortly means quickly. It's the same word used in 22 verse 7 of Revelation. Surely I come quickly, Jesus said. So what can we do about this Antichrist and this war and this famine that science tells us is coming, that the Bible says is coming, and the death that will ensue? There is nothing we can do to stop it. Because God has ordained that this is how the end will be ushered in. This is how the tribulation will begin on the earth. This is what's next. This is what's coming soon. Well, what do we do? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this earth will go strangely dim. Can I tell you folks, a time of Jacob's trouble and much more is coming. It's coming. I'm not a prophet. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. You can read it in black and white and red just like I've read it to you. There are days, terrible days coming to this earth. Science now is starting to see it. They're saying, oh yes, there's a great famine on the horizon. And they're right. But it's not because of the population of the earth. It's because God takes the next step in the Word. If you will, the next chapter begins. The calendar rolls over to the next event. What's the next thing to happen on God's calendar? It is the taking away, the calling out, the rapture of the church. That is the next thing to happen. And we are seeing signs all over the earth today that show us that it could be at any moment, at any time. And people say, well, they've been saying that since Peter. Peter even talked about that. He sure did. And it was as true then as it is now. But as I live and as I watch and as I see what is going on in this earth, I believe the coming of Christ is, is just a moment away, just a minute's notice. And the question then becomes, are we ready? He's coming. You believe that? He's coming. He's coming soon. These events we're talking about are coming soon. The question is, are you ready? If tonight, now they tell us, science tells us that this famine could be four years away. Four years, just so, as short as four years away. Jesus could take his church tonight and everything here go off without a hitch. Everything in the Bible start to happen, continue to happen. All these seals, everything in the Revelation, everything in Daniel and Ezekiel and Isaiah and all the other books, it could all pick up tonight or tomorrow and carry right on in and not have to stretch at all. What does that tell me? It tells us we need to be ready. We need to be ready. I believe he's coming soon. Now, church, what does that mean for us? We need to live like he's coming. We need to live like he's coming. We need to take what we talked about in the Bible study. The fruit, right? The fruit of the Spirit. Not the fruits, the fruit. The one fruit that encompasses those seven characteristics of Christ. Take those and go out into this world and tell them Jesus is coming. Well, what if they make fun of me? Then let them. What if they criticize me? Then let them. What if my family gets mad at me? Well, let them. Listen, my friend, you better tell them because Jesus is coming. One day, we're going to hear what we've longed to hear for so long. We're going to hear his voice as he calls us home through sickness and death. Or we'll hear his voice as he calls us through the air. That day is coming. You can be sure. I believe, and I can't, I, and I can't quote your scripture. Don't you go saying I'm making predictions. I believe, I believe my generation will see the rapture. I believe that. I believe some of you here the generation maybe before mine will see the rapture. I believe it could happen tonight. What does it mean if it happens tonight? It means the time of the church is over. The church age, as we understand it, ends. So that begs the question, are we ready? Are we ready? Because Jesus is coming soon. Let's stand together all around the church tonight. They can get us a song. I feel as though God's got one more message in this series on coming soon that we'll bring next Sunday.
But the question is coming before us. He's coming. Are we ready? I hope that you are. Now, through all of this, one of my primary things, my primary goals, I think that God touched my heart with or that I wanted to accomplish was to show you that everything the world is... Now, listen, the world is saying these things are going to happen without the Scriptures. They're not considering. They're not consulting this. They're not looking at this. They're saying it based on what they see. And what I want you to understand is what they are seeing is exactly what this says. And they are saying, now I'm not saying they're right, but they're saying some of these things could be just a page flip on the calendar away. If that to be true, I believe it is. Not because they said it, but because I believe the Bible. I believe Jesus is coming. And even if I don't go by the rapture, I'm going by the grave. And I know where I'm going. I know. I know I'm going to him. Do you know you're going to him? Do you have that assurance, that blessed assurance that Fanny Crosby wrote about? Do you have that in these last days? 2 Timothy 3, the verse we've drawn on for weeks now. Perilous time shall come. One thing we need is that blessed assurance. Father, tonight we stand in front of you, in front of your word in front of the truth of your word. And once again, we see how science and the earth and the minds of this earth who are not consulting you are literally explaining your word before our eyes. The things they say are coming, we see them in the scripture. And Lord, this particular topic tonight of a worldwide famine and a shortage of food And Lord, I guess maybe for years we've maybe looked at that and kind of scoffed at it. But Lord, we see in your word that it's going to happen. And Lord, we just can't help but think it's not far away. But Lord, help us not to uh, miss the main point of it all, that we must be born again. And that Lord, when you come, if we are not found in Christ, we are not going. We're going to stay here and we're going to suffer that tribulation, that suffering. So God, tonight, if there's any in the place who have not come to Christ, they've not been saved, they've not had their sins washed in the blood of the Lamb, let them come be saved. Lord, if there's those who are carrying a burden, those who are hurting, those who are struggling, maybe those who are just dealing with life and they're having a terrible time, draw near to them, Father, and show them that we have a hope. Even though these terrible things are coming, we've got a great hope, and it's in Jesus. So we pray you'll have your way now, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.